All right, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Last time we went to Minmus and got back safely. So I think in this particular game here, I think we'll learn about how to do a rendezvous and docking. Now that's something that is pretty tricky, and but definitely something that's good to learn about. Um, because if you wanted to do any kind of complex shipbuilding, for instance, maybe making multiple ships or even if you wanted to build a space station, for example, you're going to need to know how to get two bodies next to each other in orbit. And you, know, you may think, oh, that's, you know, that's not too bad. You know, how bad could that be? You just kind of launch them and maybe they'll meet up. But there's a definite set of criteria that we need to follow. And it's really not that bad once you get used to it. So let's start a game here. And I think we'll just resume the game we had going before. So we'll load right into the vehicle assembly building here, and I think what we're going to do is we'll take two spacecraft and kind of just have them meet up in space, almost kind of like they did in the uh, Gemini missions um, back back in the early days of NASA. So let's see. We want to make two spacecraft dock together. Let's let's make a manned ships. So we'll take command pod Mark One. Like I said, we'll do this kind of like the Gemini. I think it was Gemini 6 and 7 that had a rendezvous. So the first thing we should do is make sure we have our docking ports. Now there's two kinds, well there's many kinds, but you got the regular Clampatron docking port, which is fairly big. Um, if we tried to use that, it almost takes up the whole capsule. So we don't want that. And then we have this little Junior, the Clamp Clampatron Junior. That one is more suited for our needs for this little tiny capsule. Um, if you're building space stations, you can come right over here and grab the Clampatron Senior, and as you'll see, this one definitely is not for us. Okay, so let's get rid of that. We'll stick with this one. Now you're probably wondering, but wait a minute, what about parachutes? How are we going to get back down from space if we took up our parachute spot? Well, that's why they made these little radial mount parachutes here come over here and press the X key and get two of them. We'll just stick them right on the sides. This way we can still safely return to the Earth. Not the Earth, the curb, <laughs> the Kerbin. <laughs> Alright, so let's make our standard ship here. We want to grab a decoupler <clears throat> and we want to have a good bit of fuel right there. And I think today, let's grab a nuclear the atomic engine. Now the reason we're going to use the atomic rocket motor is not because it thrusts particularly hard, it's because it's really fuel efficient. If you look on the right hand side engine, you see max thrust is 60, that's you know, it's really not a whole lot. But we have engine ISP a little lower, it says 220 ASL, that's 220 in the atmosphere and 800 in a vacuum. And basically the higher that number, the more fuel efficient the engine is. And so 800 is vastly more fuel efficient than any of these other engines. Um, if you see over here on this one, 390 in a vacuum, 350 in a vacuum, 330, 370. So you get the, the idea. They're all mostly around 350 to 370, um, but this atomic engine here is 800. So that just means we'll get the most out of our fuel. The only drawback of this engine is it's it's kind of long and clunky, but it's okay. We'll go with it. Another thing that's important, obviously we're going to need our stabilizer, so we'll just throw that in there. And another must-have is SAS, but I think we'll use different different set of fuel tanks. We'll use these radial mounted ones just because I like them. Let's see. Should we go two? So each one of these has 40 monopropellant. That's uh, RCS fuel. And that should be good enough. And let's come over here and grab the thrust blocks. Now when you're performing docking it's really important 
that you have your um, thrust blocks positioned correctly on your ship. Now I see here that, wow, okay, so the center of mass is really, it's kind of low on that fuel tank, which I think, you know, I might change things. Let me see. Let's see if we put another... Maybe we'll use a different engine because... Let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Honestly, I think I'd prefer that. Now, the center of mass is still kind of down a little further. Um, so, you know what though we'll do? We'll grab... We'll grab our battery bank and that should help bring that center of mass up a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. Alright, so we'll position these thrusters, like I said in earlier videos, but equidistant apart from the center of mass. And I'll explain exactly why you want that once we get up there. Let's get a couple solar panels. Here we are. We'll grab these 1x6s. So this is kind of very similar to our first orbiter. Actually, I think I just might flip them upside down. Press the D key twice, rotate them around. This way they're not in the way of those thrusters. So this is almost exactly like our um, our other one. So we'll we'll call this since it's based off the Gemini. We'll call it Gemini Six, right? Because that's pretty much that's pretty much the uh, the missions back in the old NASA days that did their first rendezvous. Because this was kind of like new stuff. They would never heard of a rendezvous, so they kind of had to make it up. So in honor of that, we'll do we'll name it that. Alright, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we could use. This is just going to be our orbiter. We're going to use this to dock. So let's grab a decoupler. And let's come over to structure. We'll do the... We'll do the tricoupler again. I liked the way that worked out last time. And we'll do three of them. And we'll put the vectoring engine in, because we want to be able to steer. <coughs> we'll strut. Up here too. And we'll throw on here some boosters. Because boosters are cool. There we are. Put a little nose cone on there like that. Get our strut connectors on there. And before, just like it before, we'll add in a couple struts over here, just to make sure the top part is stable too. Alright, let's grab stability enhancers. Let's just make sure it's staged. These are our main engines, we want them to fire first. Might as well move them up to the next stage. Main engines, boosters, clamps. Take off the center of mass, so I think I think we're good to go with this one. This is our ship right here. All right, so let's get this bad boy into orbit. All right, here we are. And since it looks like it's getting towards night, I might just time warp it around a little bit. There we go. So that we have some nice sunlight for you guys so you can actually see stuff. Alright, let's get this thing throttled to press the T key, and here we go. We are off.
to a nice launch here. We have Jeb in the pilot seat. So since you guys have probably seen this a bunch of times already, I think I'll just pause it and we'll come back once the ship is in orbit. And we'll go ahead and launch the next vehicle that we'll be rendezvousing with. So, see you then. Alright, so what I've done here is I've put the ship in a slightly higher orbit than normal, 150 by 150. And so what that's going to mean for us is when we launch the second ship, um, I'm going to purposely launch it a little behind uh, this first ship and I'm going to make the orbit a little lower. So what that means is, remember, because the second ship's going to have a lower orbit, it's going to have a higher velocity, and it's going to be able to catch up on this first ship right here. And now look at that. We're actually right uh, straight up from the Kerbal Space Center right there. It's pretty interesting. So here we go. We're going to go to Space Center. Now, don't hit Revert Flight. <laughs> We're going to hit Space Center. So what that's going to do is leave Jab in orbit, practically. And we're going to go back to the assembly building. And here we have our same ship. And I'm just trying to think. I don't think we really need to change anything. It's It got into orbit just fine. And it, it's going to work out great, I think. So we're just going to launch this one. probably have um, maybe Bill or Bob flying at this time. Bill Kerman in the pilot seat. So we'll get this thing throttled up and we'll hit the T key and we'll get right on our way. I should probably take a look at the map. So we've launched pretty much right as he's going around straight up and that's actually perfect. That's That worked out just right because I want this craft to be a little bit ahead so that we can chase it a little bit. If I launched it perfectly in time, which would mean this capsule would be a, a lot further to the left, we would catch up on it almost immediately, and then I wouldn't really have to explain how to do a rendezvous, because they'd be pretty much right next to each other. <laughs> so we're going to make this a little more difficult, because sometimes your rendezvous won't always work out perfectly like that. Actually, I think we can see them. Drop these things off. If you take a look to uh, just just to like the top left of our craft, we can actually see Jeb's craft flickering away right up, really far above us, like about a hundred thousand meters right above us. That's crazy. I don't know. If we could actually see that. <laughs> Hello, Jeb. So we're coming up on our 10 kilometer mark. And we're just going to start turning this thing over. Yep, there he goes. I'm pretty sure that's him. I mean, <laughs> what else would it be? It could be a piece of debris. That's also true. Let me see. No, that's that's got to be Jeb. That's got to be Jeb that we're meeting up with. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to pause it again, and uh, when this thing is fully in orbit, we'll come back. Okay, so now we now have our second craft in orbit. And just so we don't get confused, I'm going to rename this one uh, Gemini 7. Even though I think in the real Gemini missions, uh, 7 was actually launched first and then 6 was launched. But this isn't real life, right? It's Kerbal Space Program. Okay, so um, we should probably talk about um, the basic maneuvers that you can do when you're using RCS. But let me just have a look at the map first so we can see there's us. Gemini 7, and there's our target ship, Gemini 6. And you can see that we're in a lower orbit, and they are slightly higher than us. So, 
if we just left it alone, we'd naturally catch up with them anyway, but we have to cross their orbit. So what we want to do, anytime you're trying to rendezvous with anything, you want to click on it and you want to set it as target. And that'll just give you, it'll just make your life way easier. You can see the descending nodes, 0.2, that's almost perfect, so we're not going to worry about changing inclination. Alright, so we're going to use a combination of the main engine and our RCS thrusters to meet up with this thing. So let's press the R key here, get enable our RCS. Now we know when we maneuver, we can just use the standard um, WSAD keys to rotate the ship around, right? W, S, or that was AD rather, and here's W and S. And then of course we can use the Q and the E keys to rotate the ship. But that's not all you can do. There's a whole another set of things that you can do with your ship when you have uh, the RCS thrust. It's called translation. Now when we, if you, um, you can have to use two hands for this really. When you go over to the I, K, J, and L keys on your keyboard with your right hand. So for example, if you press the I key, you can see that the thrusters are now thrusting upwards. So in other words, we're pushing the ship straight down. We're not actually changing any rotation, the ship's just going to go straight down. Press the K key, it goes the other way. We're thrusting the whole ship upwards, we're translating the ship. Take a look at the J key, you'll see we're actually pushing to the left now. And the L key pushes the ship to the right. And there's two more. If we press the H key, we see that the ship thrusts forwards, and if we press the N key, the ship thrusts backwards. So these are all the things you can do when you're uh, in space. Now, they came out with the docking cam over here on the bottom left. Not the docking cam, but docking mode. And, you know, to be honest with you, I never learned how to use it because I just got so used to using the uh, IJKL and H and N keys. If you like using docking mode, go right ahead. I'm just going to stick with regular staging mode. All right. Um, so let's meet up with the ship. We set it as the target already. So what we're going to do, we have to touch it. We have to meet up with it. So we're going to set a maneuver node. And we're going to just push forward. And we'll see what we get. Now we get these two little reticles here. Again, this is our intersect one is and we can see the separation is about 119 kilometers away. So if we thrusted forward at this point, we would be missing it by 119 kilometers. It's in front of us. So what that means is, whenever that happens, you can do a couple things. We can try moving them around. Now if you see, the later we wait, they're kind of starting to meet up without even having to use any more fuel. So look at that. Now we have separation five kilometers. That's way better. And all we did was burn just forward for just a second. Just a one second burn, but we placed that maneuver node a little further ahead and it got us there. Let's see, what else could we do? We could place another node. And we can try pulling this way. That would probably use, eat up a lot more fuel, <coughs> as you can see. But then there's, there's a meetup over here. Now when it splits off like that into two different colors, they're kind of flickering around, but the orange one means the intersect right now. That's the most recent one coming up. And um, the pink ones kind of tend to mean the next intersect, so I think around the next orbit or the next closest location, so don't get confused by it. Um, let's see, what else could we do with that? And you could kind of flip these around too. and. By a combination of messing with the different toggles, you can get it. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to use the delayed prograde thrust, we'll call it. So we're just going to, again, pull it out till it just breaks the orbit. And we're just going to slide the maneuver node around until those two toggles meet up over there. Separation 8.4. See if we can get a better one. 7.2. Oh, now it's at 15, that's even worse. Let me 
we can play with these a little more. 7.5. Oof, 10.6. So you kind of just gotta dink around with it until it's just right. 6.4. Now I know we had a better one earlier, and the reason the reason these aren't perfect, I think, it's just because just little slight changes in our incline. Actually, no, it looks like. I see, okay, so let's actually move it even further out. Let's just see if we can get an even better one. And it's going to disappear, isn't it? Oh, okay. Let's see. Actually, what about over here? Oh, see, sometimes if you slide it around too much, it'll actually just disappear on you. So, let's try it again. right about there 7.0 all right we'll go with that we'll work with that I know we had a better one um, earlier but I kind of lost it because <laughs> I was kind of digging around so we'll take this one seven's not bad and we can always correct it again so we're just gonna warp forward a little bit and you can see we're naturally just catching up on that ship anyways so but we, but we won't ever touch it unless we cross the orbit right so that's what we're gonna do get it lined up. This is probably like less than a second burn, so really wait till it gets down and we'll hit it just there. So let's see what we get. <clears throat> 6.3, so that's even better. Now we can, let's hit the R key, the RCS, and we're going to press the H and N keys to see if we can get a better one. Alright, that's worse. So right about there is probably perfect, 6.3. It's not going to get any better than that for the time being. So let's let time do its job. You can see we're just slowly catching up. We can probably actually see it now, or at least the, um, the indication. There it is, that little green thing out there. It's 65 kilometers and falling. So we're actually just getting real close to it. And it's telling us that over here with these two nodes, that's the closest it's going to get before it starts getting farther away again. All right, now you're probably wondering, okay, so what do you do once you get to this point to stop yourself from getting far away? We'll take a look at the nav ball. Now, normally it says orbit, orbital speed, but it's actually switched to target speed. Let's slow down time a little bit. So if I click around it, there's the orbit. That's our orbital speed. That's our surface speed. One more time, that's our target speed. This is how fast we're going in relation to the target. This is our basically our transverse velocity. So what you want to do is, and you'll notice that the prograde marker, it's in a different spot than if it was in the orbit. If it's orbit, it's this way. But if we hit the target mode, the prograde's this way. That's because it's prograde in relation to the target. We're moving this way towards the target, the pink reticle being the target. So what we're going to need to do, and just this is like something you just got to learn, is that when you, when you meet up at the closest encounter here, the closest approach, you're going to want to cancel your relative velocity. So that's why we're going to point retrograde with the target selected at the top. And let's just zoom it in a little bit with our speed. We're going to warp. Coming in here, coming in real close, 7.4. So you can see it's moving right to left, and we're also pointed right to left. So that means when we start thrusting that way, it's going to kill all our transverse velocity. <laughs> Again, transverse velocity meaning, meaning how fast I'm going in relation to Gemini 6 over there see and it looks like okay we've crossed the closest point already so we're gonna want to start thrusting we only have to kill 26 meters per second so let's get that going and it's coming down fast so it's, it's gonna move around on you that retrograde vector let's just follow it as best as you can and get it as close to zero as you can 0.3 is not bad 
Now we're basically now moving at the same velocity. Basically. Very close, at least. Because we're still slightly inwards, we're going to be picking up speed. That's why the target velocity is going up. So what we want to do now that we're pretty much zeroed out... See, it stopped moving from left to right, didn't it? It's just kind of frozen there now. Now we want to point at the pink target reticle. So we're just going to burn right at the target. And you're going to want this prograde marker to line straight up with that pink one. And so to do that, I've pointed a little past it, and that'll kind of force it right in the middle of that reticle. So now we're moving towards the target, right at it, at about 10 meters per second. Now, it's, look, it's drifting. It's going to want to drift. I'm just going to want to kind of keep it, keep it right there. <laughs> so if you can see, what we've literally done is we've just pushed our orbit basically out again. Now we're going to meet up at 5 kilometers, but we want to get a little closer, so let's burn a little more until this thing gets a little closer. See, now we're at 1.2. Let's get it, let's just get it right down. Let's get down to like 0.5, right there. So it's going to be about 500 meters away. <clears throat> so now we're heading at it a lot faster, right? 41 meters per second. So we're going to turn around again. Turn the ship around to the retro retro target vector. And we're just going to zoom time again. We're not going to go too fast, though, because we don't want to accidentally smash right into it or fly by it. So we're getting a lot closer now. Now, if you notice, the retrograde indicator has gone away from the target indicator. So what I'm going to do here is go on this side of the marker and just push it. I'm just going to thrust it so that it lines up with the anti-target reticle. See, we're already coming in here. I'm just going to push it around until it stays lined up. Coming in now, we're less than thousand meters. Now it says we're going to meet at a hundred meters away. <laughs> it's even closer. So we're getting there. Do a little bit of a warp. It's really close now. We can actually almost see it. So again, I'm just going to push this reticle around, and by doing that, it's actually slowing us down, but at the same time, it's keeping us lined up with the target. And that's what we want. We want to be heading always right at the target. It's really close now, so I'm just going to thrust a little more. 50 meters. Again, we're just canceling the relative velocity. Heading towards it now at a very crawling 2 meters per second. But that's what you want. When you're doing docking, you don't want to go too fast. Alright, we'll just finish it. And there we are. We, we are pretty much just now... It's hard to see it because it's in the shadow, but there we are. There's our two spacecraft just kind of sitting there, lined up. All right, so let's switch back to six over here, and oh, it looks like that thing's just slowly, slowly heading towards us. So I'm gonna move back maybe, and I'm just gonna press the RCS key and just press the H key once, just to ensure that we don't accidentally smash into each other. And let's go back to this one. I'm gonna point this craft now in a place where it won't rotate at all. So I'm gonna. I'm going to point it, actually since my ship is right there, let's point it just straight at the planet. I'm going to point it right at the planet, so it's looking right at it. I'm going to keep the SAS active in this ship, and that's a big deal because if we don't have the SAS on, this ship's going to drift away and it's going to be impossible to dock with it. So, I, oh, I should probably explain, I shifted between craft using the square bracket keys. Um, they're kind of right at the top top right of your keyboard there, right by the, the the backspace button, and kind of the enter key. That switches between the two ships. Pretty big when you're docking. So with this ship now, we're going to face it the opposite direction that the other ship is facing. We're going to point directly away from the planet. 
So now what's happening is we're facing this way and they're facing that way. <laughs> so we're, we're, we want our docking ports lined up. That's basically what I'm getting at here. Actually, you know what? Since this is a little easier to see because the sun's over here, we're going to use Gemini 6 to dock it. So I'm going to right click right on that docking port and set that as the target because eventually you're going to want that docking port as the target. And I'm going to press the R key for RCS. Now, since we're lined right up away from the planet, we're going to just use the IJKL keys to translate to the right. And so I'm going to press the L key, and you're going to see the whole ship is now just sliding to the right. Slide to the right. Slide to the right. All right, sorry. And so we are going to just... Not too fast now, we're just going to slide over. And you'll see on the nav ball, the pink target reticle is going to start shifting in our direction. And let's just make sure we're not too close so we don't accidentally smash into each other. No, we're, we're pretty far apart. That's good. That's We want that. Now as soon as that pink reticle is straight across the bow of our ship, we're going to stop translating. Actually, right about right about now, we're going to shift over like that. Just cancel out whatever we just did. Now, it looks like the other ship has started to slide around. It has, so I'm going to switch back to it and make sure it's po still pointing right away from the planet here. A good way to avoid that happening is if you point north or south, but I didn't do that, so we're not going to do that. Again, once you switch back, you have to set it to target again. And let's just... Let's just move over a little more. Translating over. Point over this way. There we have it. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Alright, so there we are. We're pretty much lined dead up now, and if you press the V key a few times, you get to chase cam. We, we pretty much were in chase cam, but what that means is um, whichever direction that you thrust, it's going to make sense to you in the main picture view. Uh, but anyway, so now we're pretty much lined up. We're going to press the H key to start going forward. And if you notice, now the prograde vector, the target vector, and where our ship is pointed is all lined up, and that's what you want. You're going to want all three of those things to basically be lined up. And if you did it right, two, your ships should dock. Now, it looks like we're a little bit off. I'm just going to point it this way a little bit. Slow down a little bit, and there. Now, if you get once you get close enough, they're gonna start like magnetizing. Now, I always found if you press the T key, it'll stop screwing up. And there we are. We have now just mated. <laughs> Bill and Jeb are one. We've, we've become one spacecraft. And uh, since we're kind of just rotating around now, I'm just gonna press the T key just to stop our rotation. And there we have it. The two ships are now one, and so if you wanted to, just a, a little tip, if you wanted to fly with one ship, because you have both engines activated, this is what happens if you thrust. <laughs> so they're just doing nothing, they're canceling each other out and wasting a bunch of fuel. So you, if you wanted to pilot with one of them, you'd have to come over here and shut down one of the engines. Okay. Then, then you could you could do things right. Just be careful; these docking things are pretty bendable. So if you like torqued it real hard, it might break. I guess you'd have to torque it pretty hard. You see, when we start thrusting, it kind of compresses in the middle there, and then decompresses. So that's just something to watch out for. But anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this little rendezvous and docking tutorial. Um, like I said, it sounds like a lot, and it's really technical, but once you get it down, it's really not too bad. 
um, and you can just use this basic tutorial to help you out whenever you need it. And it's it's really fun if if you want to build space stations, you can launch a bunch of different things up, make them rendezvous, and dock them together. Highly recommend you use the Clampatron Senior if you're making space stations, because like I said, these little docking ports kind of are flexible, and the thing will start bending. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial, and we'll catch you next time.